the dual axis chart. It's one of those chart types that gets people into fights and they may not even know why they're fighting about it. They just know that there's something wrong with plotting two lines corresponding to two different axes. And on today's episode of the video series, Nigel Houghton is here to help us understand the pros and the cons of the dual axis chart and maybe when we should avoid them. So I'm going to turn it over to Nigel so you can learn more about this particular chart type. Thanks, John. The dual axis chart. The dual axis chart, as its name implies, is a chart that has two separate vertical or y axes, one on the left and one on the right. Normally, anyway, each one portraying a particular data set and using a common horizontal or x axis. These two separate data sets and charts may both be line charts or bar charts or one of each. Maybe even a different chart type may be used at times. So why use a dual axis chart? This may be because you want to be able to show your reader the relationship between two data sets as they share a common data series on the horizontal scale. And so a dual axis chart may be one way to compare the two trends and the two data sets. You may want to show and compare two different variables, for instance, light reflectance and distance, or maybe data that may use very different scales, uh, for instance, relative data and absolute data. Maybe even two very different magnitudes of the same measure, i.e. centigrade and Fahrenheit or kilometres and miles. It's mostly done because it's perceived to be easier for the reader and the audience to see the positive or negative correlations when the data are placed on top of each other along the common x-axis. They can, seemingly, illustrate a lot of information with limited space and allow you to discover trends you may have missed, especially if you're switching between graphs. So surely an effective way to illustrate the relationship between two or more different variables. So when John asked me to speak about this type of chart, I thought it'd be easy to find good examples out, out in the wild, but it's actually not that easy. Scanning lots of scientific papers, finding a good example, or one that I find was uh, a great, a good example, was not that easy. So maybe this does say something about how useful these charts really are. But I do have an example of a dual axis chart that I think does its job. This has been replicated many times, but in this particular example is using NOAA data and is produced by ClimateGov. We have a chart that shows, according to the title, atmospheric carbon dioxide and the Earth's surface temperature from 1880 to 2019. On the horizontal x-axis, we have time running from 1880 to 2020, 2019 actually. <clears throat> and on the vertical axis, the y-axis, we have on the left the difference from the 20th century average temperature measured in degrees Celsius. And on the right hand vertical axis, the y axis, we have carbon dioxide CO2 concentration levels measured in ppm, which is parts per million. This should work just as well as two separate charts to range one above the other as well. So let's have a look at the chart. Starting in 1980, we see some blue bars starting at zero and going down on the minus scale the vertical scale towards minus 0.6. But we also here see a line starting at roughly minus 0.45. As we scan along the date line, the blue bars gradually get shorter and shorter until we hit uh, zero around about 1940. And from here on, we see a few red vertical bars rising from the, from the zero line, then a section where we have some red, some blue. But then as we scan further to the right hand side, we see by 1980 and then towards 2019, the vertical red bars getting longer and reaching what could be 400 ppm. At the same time, we go back to 1880, we see that the line starting at minus 0.45 gradually slopes upwards and hits zero in approximately 1970 and then rising again until that line hits approximately 410 ppm in 2020. So I think straight away you can, we, you can see the problem that I have with many of the dual axis charts that we see. Which axis refers to which data set and therefore which chart type? The bars are, as we probably guessed, the temperature. Um, but how can we should be sure about that? I know we have blue and we have red, which supposedly can mean uh, cool and warm. But there's nothing here to tell us that. And, but because we know that global temperatures are rising, um, we can follow that and, and assume that that's what that means, but the chart doesn't make that clear. And the same applies for the line chart. Yes, when you look at it closely, it's grey, like the text on the right-hand side, the carbon dioxide. 
But again, this isn't really easy to spot. So this chart would need some serious signposting or a key, or at least a pointer to say what's what. What we can see is that the two plots are following each other and seem to be doing roughly the same thing in roughly the same time scale, which is really the idea of putting one on top of the other onto a dual axis chart. So as can be seen here, a dual axis chart has its uses and is generally used to show and compare data trends between different variables, parameters and scales, etc. It can be a useful chart type, but it really needs to be thought through if you are to use it effectively. And thanks to Nigel for that great review of the dual axis chart. I, for one, am not a big fan of the dual axis chart type. I think it leads to way too many confusing uh, positions and areas where your data, you know, if you think about just a single dual axis chart with two lines tagged to do for two different axes, you know, where they cross is going to be a focal point. And that focal point may not have any real meaning. It's just based on how the data are scaled and how the two axes are scaled. So personally, I recommend avoiding them if you can or in very specific circumstances. But maybe you'll prove me wrong now that you know more about the chart type. So until tomorrow, uh, this has been the One Chart at a Time video series. Thanks so much for tuning in.